American explorer Victor Vescovo descended nearly 11 kilometers into the Mariana Trench, and this at its lowest point is nearly 11 kilometers deep. That's deeper than Mount Everest is high. A fascinating statistic. In the end, the Mariana Trench is a realm of surprise, thriller, and extraordinary beauty. From its thoughts-boggling depths to the resilient creatures that call it domestic, the trench is a testament to the marvels that lie underneath the surface of our planet. So the subsequent time you gaze out on the vastness of the sea, recall that there's a whole global under the waves, waiting to be discovered and understood. Dive in and allow the mysteries of the Mariana Trench captivate your imagination. Don't go away and stay with us. Have you ever contemplated what lies beneath the surface of the ocean, far away from the daylight and human reach? The Mariana Trench, placed inside the Western Pacific Ocean, is the innermost part of the world's oceans. But simply how deep are we talking about right here? It's so deep that in case you dropped Mount Everest into it, the mountain summit could nevertheless be more than a mile underneath the surface. As deep as the trench is, it is not the spot closest to the center of Earth. Because the planet bulges at the equator, the radius at the poles is about 16 miles, 25 kilometers, less than the radius at the equator. So parts of the Arctic Ocean seabed are closer to the Earth's center than the Challenger Deep. A chain of volcanoes that rise above the ocean waves to form the Mariana Islands mirrors the crescent-shaped arc of the Mariana Trench. Interspersed with the islands are many strange undersea volcanoes. In this video, we delve the different challenges that are faced by scientists during the exploration of Mariana Trench. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and share your opinions about this amazing video in the comments below. The Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known place on Earth, with a depth of between 35,755 and 35,853 feet, 10,898 to 10,928 meters. It is located at the southern end of the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean, near the Mariana Islands. The Challenger Deep occupies a vast underwater area. Its bottom is about 7 miles long, 11 kilometers, and 1 mile wide, 1.6 kilometers. The water temperatures at the lowest known point on the planet range from 34 at 39 degree F, 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. The pressure at the lowest known point on the planet is between 15,000 and 16,000 pounds per square inch, PSI. That is, a thousand times stronger than at a surface, or the equivalent of being crushed by the weight of 50 jumbo jets. Nevertheless, Researchers and oceanographers believe that the Challenger Deep is not the deepest point of the world's oceans. The Challenger Deep was named after the HMS Challenger, the vessel of the British Royal Navy that led the Challenger Expedition, 1872 to 1876, the world's first global marine research journey. On March 23, 1875, the scientists recorded a sounding of 4,475 fathoms, 26,850 feet or 8,184 meters in the region. Over the years, the measurement was fine-tuned and later consolidated, but the HMS Challenger expedition marked the birth of modern oceanography. It also provided the first map of the ocean floor showing how it gently slopes away from the land and then plummets thousands of feet into vast, flat plains. The Western Pacific, however, is different. It drops off again into the five-mile-deep hole, the Mariana Trench, a natural trench that runs twice the length of California and is 30 times deeper than the Empire State Building. On January 23, 1960, Trieste, an Italian research bathyscaphe, became the first manned watercraft to reach the bottom of the Challenger Deep. The deep diving submersible was piloted by Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh. Guam in those days was a backwater and just right for us. We were trying to do the project sort of out of sight because we weren't too sure it was going to work. The Navy just didn't want to be embarrassed by a failed science spectacular. While the duo was making the descent, one of the submarine's outer windows cracked. We heard a big bang, but we didn't know what it was. We looked around, checked everything. If the inner window had cracked, we would have been instantly dead. Walsh and Picard decided to proceed with the dive. They spent five hours descending and reached a depth of 35,797 feet, 10,911 meters. They found flatfish at the bottom, took a self-portrait, and initiated a return to the surface. The underwater explorers only spent 20 minutes at the bottom of the world, deep into the abyss. 
In 2012, James Cameron, the producer of The Abyss and Titanic, went almost all the way down to the bottom of the Challenger Deep. Inside a small submarine, he descended to 35,754 feet, 10,897.8 meters below the ocean surface. Cameron described the place as incredibly lonely and almost sterile. Cameron took core samples of the ocean seabed and decided to come back after a couple of system failures. In April 2019, American undersea explorer Victor Vescovo set a new record for the deepest descent ever at the Challenger Deep, 35,853 feet, 10,928 meters. On the bottom of the ocean, he found candy wrappers and plastic bags. As for the American explorer Victor Vescovo, he went down to 10,928 M in 2019 and made a record 14 dives into the trench. And while he was able to marvel at this lunar-like underwater landscape and discover new species, he also spotted some plastic waste. Hamish Harding, who recently died in the implosion of the Titan submersible, held the record for the longest dive, four hours and 25 minutes, and crossing 4.6 kilometers in 2021, Catherine Sullivan was the first woman to reach the Mariana Trench during a diving expedition in 2020 with Victor Vescovo. Hope you like the videos. Please like and subscribe our channel for amazing videos and also press the bell icon. Extreme pressure. However, the largest problem facing deep sea submersibles is the incredible pressure at the bottom of the ocean, known as hydrostatic pressure. Through hydrostatic pressure, water pressure increases in proportion to the height of the water in the column, and the water at the bottom has to support the weight of the incompressible fluid. At the average ocean floor depth of 12,200 feet, there is a column of water more than two miles high pressing down on the seafloor in any submarine that travels there. At this depth, the pressure is 5,540 pounds per square inch, PSI or 377 times sea level pressure. Thus, in order to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench, a vessel such as the Deep Sea Challenger needs to be able to withstand over 16,000 PSI of pressure to avoid being crushed like a tin can. The high pressures at the ocean floor also make it difficult for deep sea submersibles to dive and resurface. The basic physical principle allowing a submersible to function is buoyancy. A conventional submarine has ballast tanks that can fill with either air or water, changing the density of the craft and allowing the submarine to either dive or surface. In a modern submarine, compressed air is used to flush seawater out of the ballast tanks and allow the submarine to surface. Most modern submarines have maximum depth ratings of less than 2,000 feet. This means that at that depth, the pressure of the water exceeds the pressure of the compressed air preventing the water from being removed and causing the submarine to sink. For deep diving vessels such as the Trieste and Deep Sea Challenger, the dive mechanism is very simple. Massive weights are attached to the bottom of the craft to weigh it down while the craft itself is designed to float. With all of the weights attached, the dive vessel sinks to the bottom. Marine life. The Mariana Trench is home to a variety of unique and fascinating creatures. Scientists initially weren't sure what life could survive at such depths. But during expeditions, researchers have encountered various organisms at different levels of the trench, including arrowtooth eels, snailfish, and spoonworms. There were also shrimp-like amphipods and translucent sea cucumbers. Life deep down was fairly simple, mainly microbes of various sorts, including single-celled amoebas. Hundreds of different microorganisms were found in the mud, as well as microbial mats that gorge on methane and hydrogen. It's the Mariana snailfish that's truly mastered the environment, however. It's able to go farther and deeper than other competitors and feast on the prey in the trench. At a glance, the snailfish hardly seems able to withstand such pressures, but it's found a way to do so regardless, proving that life can adapt to extreme circumstances in order to survive and even thrive. In a remarkable discovery, scientists have recorded the deepest fish ever found, breaking a new record. What makes this discovery even more surprising is that the species in question, a snailfish, is not typically known to inhabit such depths. While most snailfish live in shallow waters, researchers from the University of Western Australia and the Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology managed to capture this fish at a staggering depth of 27,349 feet in August 2022. The team has been studying the world's deepest fish for a decade, and this latest finding adds to their impressive body of work. 
Some organisms that are found in Mariana Trench are so scary like Dumbo Octopus Megalodon. The extreme conditions of the Mariana Trench have led to the discovery of many new species of marine life. In recent years, scientists have identified several new species of snailfish, as well as a new species of amphipod that is capable of breaking down wood. These discoveries highlight the importance of continued exploration and research in the deep sea. Pollution. Unfortunately, even the depths of the Mariana Trench are not immune to the impacts of human activity. Plastic trash and microplastics have been found in the trench, with some studies estimating that up to 90% of the world's plastic waste ends up in the ocean. In addition to plastic, metals and other pollutants can also find their way into the trench via rivers and other sources. The presence of plastic waste in the Mariana Trench is particularly alarming. Microplastics, tiny plastic particles less than 5 mm in size, have been found in the trench's ecosystem. These particles are ingested by small organisms, which are then consumed by larger animals, potentially harming the entire food chain. The impact of plastic pollution on the trench's ecosystem is still not fully understood, but it is clear that it poses a significant risk to the delicate balance of the environment. Overall, the Mariana Trench is a fascinating and unique ecosystem that provides valuable insights into the workings of the deep sea. However, it is also a fragile environment that is vulnerable to human impact. Continued research and conservation efforts are necessary to ensure that this incredible ecosystem remains intact for future generations to explore and appreciate. Equipment and Technology Exploring the Mariana Trench requires specialized equipment and technology. Submersibles, which are small submarines, are the most commonly used vehicles to explore the trench. These submersibles are designed to withstand the immense pressure of the water at the bottom of the trench. The submersibles are typically equipped with cameras and lights to capture images and videos of the trench. The extreme underwater environment demanded specialized vessels and equipment capable of withstanding the tremendous forces at play. Overcoming these technological limitations and ensuring the safety of explorers remained a substantial hurdle in the pursuit of deep sea exploration. Lack of light. One of the most significant challenges of exploring the Mariana Trench is the lack of light. The trench is pitch black and there is no natural light source. The ocean is very, very deep. Light can only penetrate so far below the surface of the ocean. As the light energy travels through the water, the molecules in the water scatter and absorb it. At great depths, light is so scattered that there is nothing left to detect. Only the very top layers of the ocean get enough light to support plants, and most of the truly abundant animal life is crowded into the top 200 meters. This upper region is called the photic zone. Almost all of the marine plants and tiny microscopic marine organisms that engage in photosynthesis can thrive only in the photic zone. After the aphotic zone, there's complete darkness. From 1,000 meters below the surface, all the way to the sea floor, no sunlight penetrates the darkness. And because photosynthesis can't take place, there are no plants either. Animals that live in the abyssal zone feed on detritus raining down from above or on each other. And sometimes they make their own light. Certain species of deep sea fish and jellyfish have special light producing cells. To overcome this challenge, submersibles are equipped with powerful lights to illuminate the area around them. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also give your comments.